Hey everyone, Eric Watson here, freelance writer, player of games, runner of boards, recorder of videos, and a tabletop role-playing aficionado. Welcome to my D&D 2024 player class series. With this video, we're going to take a deep dive into the Barbarian class from the D&D 2024 Player's Handbook, including class breakdown, differences between the 2014 version, my top five species and backgrounds, and my personal subclass rankings. And if you stick around till the end, we're going to build a new Barbarian character using the 2024 rules via the Roll20 character Mancer. So let's jump right into the Barbarian class. The Barbarian is rated at average complexity, according to the new difficulty ratings for all of our classes. The primary ability is Strength, and you should play the Barbarian if you like battle. Which, yeah, okay, that makes sense. You'll be fighting a lot as a Barbarian, although I'm probably all going to be fighting a lot in D&D 5th Edition. The Barbarian is still based around the Rage mechanic. That's the whole concept here. And I guess it makes them a little bit more complicated because you have to choose when to Rage and keep your Rage going um, instead of just fighting and basic attacking all the time. Although the Weapon Mastery stuff does add more complexities to uh, the Marshals. I think just the right amount of complexity. Your Hit Point die is still a D12. You are the highest amount of hit points of any class in Dungeons & Dragons, you are the only class with a d12 for hit dice. That literally means whenever you level up, you can roll a d12 and take whatever the result is for your hit points plus your constitution modifier, or you can take uh, the average, which is going to be more than anybody else can do, which is awesome. Defensively, you can wear up to medium armor, or you can use unarmored defense starting at level 1 which means your armor, assuming you're not wearing any kind of armor, uh, your armor class is 10 plus your dex modifier plus your constitution modifier, which as a barbarian, you should be focusing all on your physical abilities of strength, dexterity, and constitution. But you technically don't have to completely optimize them all the way up because you can wear medium armor, which also mainly useful for magic item purposes, you can wear armor. But if you've got decent enough dex, uh, hopefully your armor, unarmored defense should be fairly equivalent to... Uh, what wearing medium armor would do. Your saving throw proficiencies are worth strength and constitution. Seems pretty obvious that you're going to be pretty good uh, defensively. Also, uh, you'll eventually get an ability that will really help you uh, danger sense at level 2 with dexterity save. So pretty much all the physical saves you've got it handled. Your weaknesses, of course, are going to be your mental saves. Anything, Anytime somebody uh, targets you with a wisdom, forcing a wisdom save or a charisma save or intelligence save, that's probably going to go a little bit more painful. You can use all simple and martial weapons just like a fighter can. Right, You can use all the weapons. Uh, the main difference now is that the uh, fighter gets um, lots and lots of weapon masteries. The barbarian gets also a lot of weapon masteries, just not as much as a fighter, I guess. Uh, you're more equal to what maybe a paladin or ranger uh, would receive. You may actually end up getting a little bit more than them. But uh, you can still unlock a lot of weapon masteries and use pretty much all... Uh, the weapons, you can also still use a shield and rage as well, because uh, you have proficiency in uh, shields as well as light armor and medium armor. You have one of the fewer, but not the fewest, starting money as just a, if you wanted to take that route or take the starting equipment of the Great Axe. Um, a lot of classes start with like 100 or maybe 120, 150 gold. You only have 75, not as bad as some of the classes that only start with uh, 50, for example. You can also shore that up by taking various uh, different backgrounds as well. So let's break down kind of the level guide here and talk about, you know, a lot of how I'm going to go into this is assuming you have knowledge of the 2014 version, but if you don't, this can also be a good uh, video to kind of uh, learn about this class as well. But I will be doing a lot of comparisons based on my experience with 5th edition. So Rage is the thing the Barbarian is all about and what defines this class over anything else. You are a primary marshal, you don't cast well, actually, you can cast a few spells depending on your subclass choice, but in general, you will be melee attacking. Also possibly rage attacking, though, which is also a difference here. So anyway, level one range means as a bonus action, you can enter a rage. What does that mean? That means you have damage resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing. The most common damage types that you will deal with from various monsters are going to be bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing. Resistance means you take half damage. That is humongous and probably the single best reason that you are going to rage. You are a tank. You can take all the damage. Not only do you have the most hit points of any class, again, on average, and maybe we're all rolling hit points and you end up rolling poorly. That's That can happen. But in general, you will have the most hit points. And if you've got resistance, you will be taking less damage than anybody else as well. 
Also, you deal bonus damage, assuming you're attacking with strength, uh, via a column table, which starts out as a plus two, and then goes up to a plus three around level nine, it looks like, and eventually capping out at plus four. Not a huge amount, but at level five, you get extra attack, and all of that uh, adds up together. By the way, already, one of the big differences here, it doesn't say melee weapon attack. It just says an attack using strength. This is a big difference in the 2014 version. 2014 version, you could only get your rage damage off of melee weapon attacks. This time it just says, hey, as long as it's strength, you're good to go. And yes, there are throwing weapons that you can use strength with. So that actually really helps the Barbarian give you some better range attacks. Opt I mean, you could always just throw things anyway. But this allows you to add your rage damage to your thrown weapons. And I would love to see your ideas for builds that are pure, just like throwing hammers or something that you're doing with. But as long as it's thrown and it can be using strength, then you can do your rage damage. You gain advantage on strength checks and strength saving throws. You're already going to have really good strength checks and strength saves. So now advantage just means you should never basically fail those. You cannot cast spells or maintain concentration. Do not play a barbarian if you like casting spells. That part should be pretty obvious. But also, Barbarian is a poor multi-class choice for anybody who wants to cast most spells. You can still cast some utility spells. In fact, there are some Barbarian subclasses which include some utility spells. By utility, I mean anything that is specifically not designed to be used in combat, like speaking with animals or something. Um, that's the kind of thing that you might be able to get away with or multi-class into. But in general, you don't really care about spells. Um, the duration changes also. Uh, in the 2014 version, your rage lasted for a minute, um, but you had to keep it going every turn by either dealing damage or taking damage. This time, uh, it's still as... You don't actually have to deal damage. You have to make an attack roll against an enemy, which is different language. So you don't have to deal damage, but as long as you're making an attack roll, you could also force an enemy to make a saving throw. There's a very few effects you can do that involve forcing a save. Obviously, spells and spell-like effects are probably the most common thing. Or, brand new to the 2024 edition, you can also take a bonus action to simply extend the rage. So suddenly, you can be out of combat. Combat has ended, and you want to keep your rage going so that you have advantage on strength checks and strength saves. Maybe you need to climb a cliff coming up. So not only does it last longer, it lasts up to 10 minutes, uh, but you can then maintain it just by taking a bonus action. That is a huge change. So all of these are buffs for the uh, from the 2014 edition, which I think is all just good things for the Barbarian and just kind of lightens the load of doing the whole rage thing, which you should be raging quite a bit. Here's the single most important edition that has been added to rage, however. If I can find the language for it. Um, you get your rage back. Here it is. You gain one expended use when you finish a short rest. Yes! <laughs> Barbarians, rise up! I know you love that ability. You gain an expended use back when you finish your rest. No more do you have to awkwardly pace your rages like they are spell slots and you're perpetually a low-level wizard because you only have like two or three rages per day. And you can't use your signature ability because you're like, oh, we're fighting some kind of like mid-tier scrubs. I really don't want to use my rage. I know that sucks for barbarians. You want to be able to rage all the time. You might not be able to guarantee that here, but you almost can because you get one back on every short rest. So if you're short resting after all the big fights, then you logically could at least do a rage for most of your fights. So uh, that is a huge, huge boon bonus. It's fantastic. Rage is just so much better now. So thumbs up to that. Armor Defense is the same. Weapon Mastery is brand new. Um, go see my 2024 video or go look at innumerable awesome videos that go over how good Weapon Mastery is. But it just adds little effects to all the different um, weapons. It does motivate you to stick to using certain weapons but you can after a long rest simply swap those around as well it just takes a long rest to be to do so but it adds nice little extra things to using uh, certain weapons so that's awesome all, all marshals get that it's also a huge buff for marshals level two danger sense is pretty much the same you get advantage on deck saves uh which means we've we're just good at all of our physical stats which is amazing reckless attack is also the same you can choose to attack recklessly uh, and doing so gives you advantage on the on your attack rolls, but then enemies have advantage on you. What's funny is uh, the one time that we played with the Barbarian in my games, my wife played the Barbarian, I was thinking, 
you know, looking at this ability, I'm like, oh gosh, I would never want to do that because a lot of times as a barbarian, you're surrounded by enemies. My wife played the barbarian and she recklessly attacked every goddamn time, regardless of how many enemies. Sometimes there were like five enemies around her and she would still reckless attack because that's what barbarians do. So uh, your mileage may vary. Um, clearly I'm not as well, uh, would be as good at playing a barbarian because I wouldn't necessarily reckless attack all the time. If you do like reckless attack, by the way, there are definitely at least one subclass that is all about uh, proccing off that reckless attack. And um, it's 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 a fine ability, I think, but a bit uh, risky to it. Uh, primal knowledge gives you some extra um, strength powered strength checks while as long as your rage is active, which again, you've got that 10 minute long rage. So it might actually come in handy where you could, I don't know if you would specifically rage just to accomplish a certain check, but technically it is uh, possible. We'll go over subclasses uh, in a little bit. Extra attacks the same at level five, fast movement. Uh, increase of 10 feet at level 5, which is great. Advantage on initiative rolls at level 7. This part is new because, remember, the surprise thing has changed in 2024 to now having disadvantage on initiative rolls if you are surprised. Well, now the Barbarian always has advantage on initiative rolls. By the way, this combos very well with the alert feat because chances are you're going to be pretty darn good at your initiative rolls. You've already got probably good decks. Now you've got advantage. With the alert feat, you can uh, swap your initiative to your wizard to allow them to crowd control everybody. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, instinctive pounce is part of the bonus action you take to enter your age and move up to half your speed uh getting into melee range is very important to barbarians most uh marshals anyway but barbarians especially because typically you want to be able to rage use your strength although now we just unlock the ability to use thrown weapons while raging which is uh pretty awesome but that still helps very much so brutal strike is brand new and this actually replaces uh brutal critical at levels 9 13 and 17 which procs off of Reckless Attack, which again is the, hey, I'm going to get advantage on everything, but everybody has advantage on me. Well, now starting at level 9, you can choose to do that, forego the advantage you would normally get, and as long as you don't have disadvantage, uh, then you can deal an extra 1d10 of damage and cause an extra effect, kind of similar to a Weapon Mastery effect, honestly. In this case, it's either pushing a target 15 feet away and then moving up to them if you want to, or reducing their speed by 15 feet. And then you get additional things um, that you can do as you uh, level up. I believe you get uh, new ones at 13, and then 17 increases the damage to 2d10. Um, this is something, obviously, I'd want to see in action to see how well-balanced that is. And it really depends on how often you're recklessly attacking uh, to get the advantage there. And if those abilities are worth it, if it's worth getting that extra damage. It can be nice, I think, obviously, if you're fighting against somebody who doesn't have very high AC. You don't need the advantage yourself, but they just have a lot of hit points. So you want to deal a lot more damage. Uh, that can be quite useful. But remember, you still have that negative effect of everybody having advantage on you. So you really got to be dialed into Reckless Attack in general in order to uh, get things on top of this. So I kind of wish instead they were things that just happened when you rage and not when you recklessly attacked. But there are subclasses uh, that build off that as well. Level 11, Relentless Rage is pretty much the same. Actually, no, it's not the same. It's better. Um, Relentless Rage before was if you dropped to zero hit points while raging... Um, you can make a con save and then pop up to one hit point. Now, it's the same thing. It's a DC 10, by the way, which should be just, especially by a level 11, is almost a gimme unless you roll a nat 1. Um, your, your hit points instead change the number equal to twice your barbarian level, which at this level is 22. So that's a big difference to go from level 1 to sudden, or from one hit, 0 hit points to 1 hit point to now 0 hit points to 22 hit points. Dang. You also uh, regain, well, it's actually interesting. It's not like a per use thing it's just that the dc increases by five which i think a dc 15 is still very doable for a barbarian and then it resets to 10 when you finish a short rest so fantastic ability that's um way better um i'm skipping obviously all the subclass stuff till we get in there persistent rage uh, means when you re uh, roll your initiative you can regain all expended uses of rage which is pretty nice you should be able to use rages in just about every fight once you get to this level because you're not really fighting scrubs anymore uh, anyway, and Domino Might is the same, where you can just take your strength score as a strength check. I mean, you shouldn't be failing these things anyway. Epic Boons are new, but I'm not going to go over Epic Boons uh, for the purpose of these class videos. And then Primal Champion is still the Capstone, which is a very, very, very boring... I mean, it's it's nice. You get to be, like, giant strength versus... Uh, giant's worth of strength and constitution, a max of 25. Both increased by 4, but not exactly the most uh, sexy Capstone. The Barbarian isn't one it's kind of like the fighter where you don't really need to level all the way throughout your campaign as a barbarian but also i think your multi-class options are a little bit more limited because you don't want to uh go into spell casting uh very much so it's, it's a tricky one to multi-class with but also how many campaigns are actually getting up to the teens anyway and i think at least through level um 11 especially and probably 12 for your uh you know asi stuff 
is perfectly fine to level up with there. So Barbarian so far pretty much only got buffs, which is honestly the same of uh, pretty much every class in 5e with very few exceptions. Got a little bit more uh, tweaked. All right, let's go over the subclasses for the Barbarian, which let's see, how do we access our subclasses? There we go. Uh, so we're going to go in order right here, starting with Path of the Berserker. Path of the Berserker uh, is from the original 2014 Player's Handbook and was notably broken uh, in the original because it, it was kind of the boring, like, hey, I just want to do my Barbarian stuff, but just, you know, slightly better, kind of like the Fighter Champion. But the original ability Frenzy... Um, said that every time you raged, you could bonus action to a whole nother attack, but then you take exhaustion at the end of your rage. That was devastating enough where literally nobody took this subclass. It was very, very bad. Um, so this one got a big buff here, although it's changed where you don't get an extra attack. Instead, you basically get sneak attack, kind of. It's essentially a equivalent to sneak attack, and it's but it's only if you reckless attack while your rage is active. So you have to have rage active, which you should have it active. You're using reckless attack, which you've already got a lot of stuff that procs off reckless attack, although not till a bit later. And then you roll a number of d6s equal to your rage damage, uh, rage damage bonus, which is two until level nine, and then it becomes three. So it's like an extra two d6, then it becomes an extra three d6. Basically equivalent to a sneak attack, although instead of having the sneak attack parameters, you have to use the reckless attack parameters. That's fine. If you're reckless stacking all the time, that's just extra damage, and there's no um, limit as to how often you do this. So you just basically get extra d6s of damage. Um, I believe it's only once per turn, though. The first target you hit on your turn with a strength-based attack. So, fine. Uh, mindless, 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 mindless rage. Immunity to the charmed and frightened conditions while your rage is active. Very, very useful. Kind of boring, obviously, to get just passive buffs. But being completely immune to Charmed and Frightened, uh, those are abilities that will fuck you up pretty bad. And as a Barbarian with probably low Wisdom saves, uh, you're going to be very uh, vulnerable to those conditions. I mean, char like Hypnotic Pattern, for example, could really fuck you up as a Barbarian and could keep you stunlocked for an entire fight. Uh, at level 6, can't happen anymore. You're completely immune to Charm. No more fear on you, any of the Frightened stuff. Like that is, Those are very common abilities for enemies to do on you. And also... If you are somehow charmed or frightened and you're able to enter your rage, you can also end the conditions early. That's a little get a little bit trickier because if you're hypnotic pattern, for example, you can't do anything. I would imagine you also can't rage. So, but very useful ability, boring but critical. Um, and then I believe these two abilities were swapped from the original handbook. It used to be intimidating presence was level ten and retaliation was level fourteen. Retaliation is as a reaction, you basically can do an attack of opportunity just from being attacked instead of somebody moving away from you. Honestly, great, because you're probably not using your reaction for anything else except for attacks of opportunity, and you might as well get the attack of opportunity while they're attacking you instead of while they're leaving your presence. So that's great. Intimidating presence is just gives you another bonus action ability, which barbarians could definitely use. Um, it's an AoE fear ability that frightens everybody around you. Um, you can do it once per long rest, which isn't a lot. You can expend rage uses to do more of it. I don't think that's worth it unless you know this is going to be like your only battle of the day, for example. Um, it's fine. The whole thing has definitely gotten buffed. Um, it's still kind of a boring um, barbarian that uh, d doesn't appeal to me as somebody who's a veteran of D&D, &D, but for somebody going into maybe their first, you know, barbarian, I think Berserker is perfectly fine and very, very useful and very easy to play. Path of the Wild Heart replaces Path of the Totem Warrior, also from uh, the 2014 book, and this one did get a little bit of uh, changes. Um, first of all, you get spells, which is very rare as a barbarian. Uh, rituals of beast sense and speak with animals. Definitely utility spells. Um, you're, this is kind of like the druid soft multi-class, but I think in a really cool way, other than the spell. I would prefer if Barbarian didn't have any of the spells, but I get why it's just easier mechanically to do them as spells. Wisdom is your spell casting ability for them. This doesn't freaking matter at all, by the way. Don't worry about, oh no, if I have to go totem, or sorry, what is it called? Uh, wild heart now. That means I have to make sure I have a decent wisdom. No, it doesn't, because these spells do not care. There's no save, there's no attack, there's nothing involved in these spells that needs your wisdom. You can have, I think, a negative two, and it doesn't matter. Like, you can still cast them as rituals, which means also very utility. It takes 10 minutes to cast them, so you really can't do it in combat. Or you could if you have 10 rounds and need to speak with an animal. But um, that's fine, I guess. But that's not the reason you're taking the subclass for those spells. You're taking it because you get extra abilities whenever you rage. And keep in mind, you're all about the rages, right? So I really like abilities that proc on the rage 
because that's what we're doing all the time as a barbarian. Bear, I'm sorry, you got nerfed. You got nerfed. You were so powerful. Nobody ever chose anything else. You, the original bear in 2014 says you were resistant to everything except psychic damage. Now, remember, when you're raging, you're already resistant to the top three bludgeoning, slashing, and piercing damage. Um, the old bear was you're also resistant to literally everything else except psychic. It was so amazing, and it catapulted this thing to the very top. We got a little bit of a nerf that says you have resistant to every damage type except force, necrotic, psychic, and radiant. So there were additional three that got put into the actually you're not resistant to that category. Um, that's a bit of a bummer. I would say I'm, I'm okay with still psychic not being there. Um, necrotic is painful because there's a lot of you know undead, especially that use necrotic damage. Uh, force not so much, but it can be painful against you know magic missile and it's a lot of spells, for example. I think it's still very, very good. That's how good it was before. You're suddenly resistant to all the elemental abilities still, plus thunder. You know, all that is incredibly useful. So you get one of the falling options whenever you rage. You cannot swap them, by the way. Uh, once you rage into this, uh, you can't change it, I think. Eagle says that you can take the disengage and dash action whenever you rage. And while your rage is active, you can take a bonus action to take both of these actions. So suddenly you get a super cunning action where you can bonus action both disengage and dash. Um, you can kind of turn yourself into a bit of a monk, I guess, with the mobile feet and just run around the battlefield. I don't know how much you need to do. It really depends on the, on the combat, right? I would still probably take bear more often, but if you, if movement is incredibly important during a battle, then Eagle is there for you. And then Wolf is more useful if you're thinking offense is better than defense. So I don't need to take the bear. I'm not going to do in a tank. Instead, I want everybody to be able to attack uh, somebody who's got high AC or something. While your rage is active, your allies have advantage on attack rolls against any enemy of yours within five feet of you, basically giving everybody pack tactics, which is pretty useful. So uh, already I love this because it gives you very three useful abilities that are situationally useful. I think bear is still probably just overall very useful, and it's always on while you're raging. That's fantastic. Level six gives you a permanent buff. However, you can change this buff whenever you long rest. The buff is either you have dark vision with a range of 60 feet or your range extends by 60 feet. If you take owl, panther, you have a climb speed equal to your speed and salmon, you have a swim speed equal to your speed. All three of those are fabulous. And I love that if you know what's coming up in the adventuring day, you can swap. You're like, hey, we got to go uh, take this ship. We might have some ship encounters. All right, well, I'm going to go swim speed. Um, we've got to just, you know, do some exploratory travel. Climb speed is probably going to be good. We're going into a cave dungeon. Give me that dark vision. Very, very useful uh, to have those permanent buffs. Yes, there are spells that can give you all of those abilities. This frees up those spells and just makes your barbarian more of a, a complete package. Level 10 is very lame. You can cast Commune with Nature. It's pretty limiting. It's also kind of DM dependent. Um, another ritual spell lets you like ask questions and get a general feel for like where are locations and stuff. Kind of turns into a bit of a ranger tracker ability or again, like the soft multi-class druid. Again, Wisdom is a spell casting ability. It doesn't matter. Um, level 14, you gain another rage ability similar to level 3, and this one starts getting insane because the Falcon says while your rage is active, you have a fly speed equal to your speed. Suddenly you can rage and just fly around the battlefield for 10 minutes while you're raging as long as you keep your rage up. Now you're saying, okay, I may rage outside of combat, which you can do because you can take bonus actions to continue that rage and just fly over whatever traps and hazards the DM has put, and then we can short rest afterwards and get my rage back. Holy crap, you have a short rest. I mean, think about it that way. You have like a short rest on-demand on -demand fly that you can use. That's That right there is amazing. Now, level 14, obviously, not going to happen for a while, but... Very, very cool. Uh, the other abilities are also fine. You have the ability to just knock people prone constantly or uh, force everybody else to have a disadvantage on attack rolls against uh, all the targets. So I still absolutely love uh, the Wild Heart, uh, even though we got the, the bear nerf. Um, World Tree, I believe, is brand new. Now, I admit I'm not one who looked at any of the uh, Unearthed Arcana stuff, so maybe it was in there. But this is the first time that I really started looking at uh, the Wild Heart, um, or sorry, Wild Heart, the World Tree. World Tree is what I meant to say. World Tree is, is a new supportive barbarian. So if you like the idea of playing kind of a tanky character, but you also want to support your party, I think World Tree is a great uh, choice. Whenever you rage, you gain temporary hit points, and you can give other people temporary hit points, and all of those things scale, which is pretty fun. Uh, think of temporary hit points as like an extra shield, basically. They get on top of their hit points. Um, level 6 says that whenever another creature begins their turn, again, while you're raging, you can use a reaction to summon them to you and then reduce their speed to zero, which, again, very supportive ability. 
D&D 5e kind of lacks a taunt ability like a lot of other video game stuff would have. This is kind of a way of doing a taunt. It does take your reactions. You only do it once per round, but as soon as another creature starts their turn within 30 feet of you, they, you, they do have to make a strength save. But if they fail, they're literally teleported right to you, and then they can't move. That is kind of a soft taunt if you think about it. Plus, you can reflame. It doesn't have to be branches coming out of the tree. You could be like, scorpions, get over here, and just pull them over to you, like however you want to do it. But I think that's a, another cool supportive ability. Uh, level 10 just increases your reach with any melee weapon um, to uh, 10 feet if you're using the heavy or versatile property. Also, you gain the push or topple weapon masteries. That's pretty cool, I think. If you're using uh, big weapons, this gives you a longer reach. Uh, reach is kind of limiting, I think, in 5e. I haven't seen a lot of... Well, we, we haven't seen the new monster manual, for example, but I know there were some monsters which had um, defensive abilities that would go off within 5 feet of them, so being in, a, in you know 10 feet away would actually help inure you to those abilities, so that's pretty useful. Level 14 is nuts. Uh, during your rage, and as a bonus action while your rage is active, you can teleport up to 60 feet to an occupied space you can see. You gain teleportation unlimited while your rage is active. You do have to use a bonus action, which means you can't be using your bonus action to maintain the rage, so as long as you're attacking or forcing saves, you know, there's other ways you can keep your rage up. You can just teleport around the battlefield. That is hugely impressive. That's honestly better than the flying ability. Um, also... Once per rage, you can teleport your entire party up to 150 feet, which is kind of crazy. Uh, so these are very, very interesting abilities. I have, again, not seen these in the wild, but uh, I'm very interested in the teleportation magic because movement like that, magical movement, is not something I would think of uh, when I think of a barbarian. So very interesting abilities there that help make the barbarian a little bit more supportive. Uh, Zealot Returns from Xanathar's from the 2014 edition, edition. This one is honestly very, very similar to the old one. You gain extra uh, 1d6 of damage. Instead of uh, the weird, like, hey, if you're raised from the dead, then the other, other things happen, you gain basically a version of the fighter's uh, secondary wind, um, but you get a pool of 4d12s you can use to heal yourself. Basically, extra hit dice and you gain them back whenever you uh, long rest, and then they kind of scale up. So that's fine, I guess. It's not terribly... You, you will be getting damaged a lot, um, so healing is obviously very good, and especially if you're playing a maybe low healer or lack of healing in your campaign. Zealot can be very useful because you can just self-heal. You might also want to just subclass into fighter to get second win, but then you can use both those on top of each other. There's no limit to that. So uh, level six means uh, when you fail a saving throw while raging, you can re-roll it, with a bonus equal to your rage damage bonus. That's straight better than the 2014 one. The other one was just a reroll, which, by the way, a reroll and a saving throw is already very good, right? Like, saving throws are such a big deal. The difference between you losing your turn or not, possibly, or turning on your allies or something can be really devastating. Um, so that's a really good feature, uh, and you can add your rage damage bonus to it, which is going to be either plus two or plus three, most likely. Uh, Zealous Presence, uh, for a bonus action, you can gain every all your allies within 60 feet advantage on attack rolls and saving throws. Hugely helpful. Very supportive for your allies. Honestly, the saves are probably even better than the attack rolls because a lot of your spellcasters probably aren't making attack rolls, but everybody could be making saving throws against uh, when bad things happen. You can use it once per long rest or expend uh, rage uses to do it more. Rage of the Gods, really, really fun, by the way. Um, whenever you activate your rage, you can go Super Saiyan form. For one minute, uh, you get to fly. You have resistance to necrotic, psychic, and radiant damage, which are specific resistances that the bear uh, spirit did not have. And also, if a creature drops to zero hit points, you can use your reaction, expend a use of rage, to instead uh, basically heal that target up to a number of hit points equal to your barbarian level, which at that point is going to be 14. That's crazy huge. Um, very supportive to where it feels like it should be on the uh, world tree one, because none of the others are really... I don't know, helpful in that way. I guess Zell's presence is, is very helpful. So I get this one is also kind of supportive. It's a, it's a half supportive and also uh, half healing and damage. It kind of has a lot of uh, things going on about it. Also, not too difficult to run, similar to uh, the uh, Berserker as well. So my overall rankings, I think, for the Barbarian, um, I would put uh, the Wild Heart still at the front, even though technically part of it got nerfed from the Totem Warrior with the Bear. I think it's still really fun to be able to have all these different choices when you rage, have all these permanent buffs on you. Um, the spells are probably the only thing that I don't really care about, but the fact that it's got stuff I don't care about and I still think this is the best one uh, speaks volumes for how just good this is. I would put the new one, World Tree, as my number two. 
Uh, the teleportation abilities are very cool. The reaction is teleport people to you and stop them is very cool. Also, every time you can just give out temporary hit points is very cool. Like every single one of these abilities is amazing. I almost should put it at number one, but it's such a new thing that I'm still going to put it at number two because I'm not quite sure. Uh, number three, I am going to put Path of the Zealot at number three. Um, the Zealot can do a lot of things. Uh, I think it looks very, very solid. I love the level 14 ability, but it's level 14, so I don't weigh that as much as the early abilities and the just extra damage, um, plus the pool of hit points. Level 3 feature basically is just kind of okay. Um, and then at the bottom of the list is the, uh, Berserker. And keep in mind, even though it's at my bottom, I think it's still perfectly fine if you want to play a very simple Barbarian with just some extra damage. Um, the passives are fine. Every single level uh, gives you some pretty good stuff that makes it worthwhile. It's just a little bit easy to me. Like the only worth, the only ability that seems interesting to me is the level 14 ability. Um, and you don't get to level 14. So that's my overall ranking. I would say uh, Wild Heart, World Tree, Zealot, and then Berserker as my subclass ranking. All right, let's go to backgrounds because we are looking at building our 2024 barbarian and what backgrounds are going to be best for using that well uh there are only so let's let's think about our, our stats right strength is our primary stat that we care about our rage only really works with strength so we have to have a good strength we don't have to put our points into strength technically depending on if we're using uh standard array or rolling you may already start with a decent strength we really want at least a 16 strength when we start so we're definitely weighing strength as our better backgrounds. Um, other stats are con and dex. We really want to have all our physical stats at probably at least a plus two, if not a plus three. Probably your basic barbarian build is going to have a plus three in strength, dex, and con, and then you're probably going to end up with like a minus one or a plus zero on intelligence, wisdom, or charisma. Now, definitely you can switch that around a little bit, but that gives us a 16 armor class with armor on armor defense, and it starts off with a plus five to hit because of our uh, proficiency bonus, and we're going to have pretty good strength stuff from there. So we're looking at strength, dex, and con mostly. There's only one background that has all three of those, but there are plenty of backgrounds that have some of those involved. Uh, just to switch to uh, backgrounds, actually easier for me to use a book than flip through them uh, via here, but we don't care about any of the ones that give spells, at least I don't, because Barbarian doesn't like casting spells, can't really cast spells while raging anyway, so we disregard stuff like uh, Acolyte or Guide, uh, or I think there's another one, Sage, all of those. A Merchant, you know, Lucky can be good for anybody. Uh, Hermit, Healer, Feet is kind of a weird one, frankly. Um, skilled, I don't think we're going to use a whole lot of different skills. Barbarian's going to be pretty, you know, unlike a Wizard or a Bard who can use a lot of different skills, Barbarian's going to be very good at all the athletic skills, uh, and then not so much anything else. The ones that we're looking at, um, you know, give you a lot of good physical stats and abilities that we're going to really take advantage of. There's two in particular that you're probably going to be most excited about for uh, the Barbarian, which is the Soldier and Sailor backgrounds, because both of those give you uh, feats that, you know, proc off of doing a bunch of melee attacks. So the, uh, which one are we on right now? Soldier, first of all, Strength, Dex, and Con. That's the best one you can get, right? All of your physical stats, you can give a plus one to each one or a plus two to one of those and a plus one to the other one. You're really shoring up and making sure, boom, I'm locked in to making a very solid Barbarian. Also, Athletics and intimid Intimidation. It's actually not great to get skill proficiencies that your class already has because that gives you less choices to choose from um, because when we choose our class, you've already got... Uh, let's see, uh, animal handling, athletics, intimidation, nature, perception, or survival. So we're already picking two of those. And if we pick soldier, that gives us athletics and intimidation. So we only have like three other uh, skills that we're choosing. But again, barbarian, how much do you care about skills? Really? We just care about hitting stuff. Uh, so feet wise, savage attacker, um, gets you uh, advantage on damage dice. You can reroll uh, damage dice that you hit. I think it's, it is once per turn, but you'll be hitting with stuff a lot. Plus some of your best weapons, like a great axe, is a 1d12. That's a you know, pretty big range between damage, between a 1 and a 10, for example. So uh, having advantage on rolling the better damage dice is very good for soldiers. Sailor is how you get Tavern Brawler, which is your grappler friend. Strength, Dex, and Wisdom is two of our three stats in there. And Tavern Brawler gives us better unarmed strikes uh, in terms of damage. And uh, we can use our Strength modifier 
Uh, we can also use improvised weapons with proficiency. You can also push people around uh, for uh, five feet whenever you hit them with an unarmed strike. So if you really like the idea of your, you don't want to be a monk, but you just want to be able to be like a boxer or wrestler or somebody without using weapons, or just have the fun appeal of picking up a chair and hitting somebody with it. Tavern Brawler is a very fu uh, fun uh, uh, feat to uh, begin the game with. I would also take a look at the farmer uh, background. So by the way, soldier is my number one. We'll go ahead and do my top five here. Soldier is my number one. Definitely Savage Attacker is going to come up all the time, and it's got all three ability scores. There's no question Soldier is the best feat you can take as a generic Barbarian. Um, I would probably argue Sailor is number two. Uh, Farmer is going to be my number three. Strength and Con are both two of the three uh, good stats that we like. Animal Handling and Nature gives us two different ones. Actually, Animal Handling may be... It is on there. Okay, so is Nature on there too? It is on there. Well, shoot. All right. And, like, and nature are both in the barbarians. So that also limits our skill proficiencies. Uh, the tough feat, though, gives us two extra points per level. That's fantastic. Especially if you're the zealot where you're going to heal a lot more because you got more hit points. Uh, so number three is the farmer. Number four, I'm interested in maybe getting some pushback on this, but I'm going to argue just how damn good the entertainer uh, musician feat is specifically. See, entertainer, I like the idea of just having the barbarian who, like, after a battle, just whips out that saxophone and uh, and starts soothing everybody. Musician gives you uh, proficiency with a musical instrument. Actually, three musical instruments. That's overkill. And after you finish a short or long rest, you can play on said musical instrument and give heroic inspiration to allies who hear this song. So you can just give out inspiration to everybody every time you take a short rest. That is so huge and powerful. Really makes you a supportive person. Um, strength and dex are two of the three we're looking for. I think musician is number four on my, and, and you know, sorry, entertainer. And, you know, you can be a gladiator, for example, entertainer. Uh, that's, you know, easy way to uh, explain that, I think. Uh, I would argue a lot of classes can benefit from this as long as you have some of these ability scores, and Barbarian certainly does. Uh, number five, honestly, was down to either guard or criminal. And I think I'm actually going to go with criminal. Guard has strength, but then it has two mental stats that I don't really care about. Uh, criminal does not have strength, so kind of a risky choice here, but it has dex and constitution. So as long as we're strength is already at least a 16, I think you're okay taking criminal where you can then shore up your dex and constitution. And the alert feat is very, very good. I mentioned uh, earlier in this video, you're going to have good uh, initiative uh, rolls because you're probably going to have good dexterity. Plus you've got advantage initiative starting at, was it level seven or so? The alert feat is... Um, Whenever you roll initiative, you can add your proficiency bonus to the roll. So now you've got an extra plus two, plus three, plus four to your initiative. And you can swap your initiative with somebody else. This makes you even more supportive because how many times are you in a battle where, you know, you all roll initiative and you're the barbarian, you roll initiative really well, and maybe your rogue does. You both, you're both rushing up there to the enemy troops of which has like eight different bad guys. And your wizards goes, guys, no, I've got this big, awesome AOE I can do to either shut them down or, or blast them. You guys just ran right in the middle of them. Now I can't. Well, now you can kind of fix that, right? You really want to be supportive. Swap your initiative with that wizard or sorcerer. Let them go first so they can throw the fireball in the room. I think this is actually a great, great pick. Alert is on both the guard and the criminal uh, background, so you could take either one. And honestly, it kind of depends on the stats you roll. Unfortunately, if we're going by the book, uh, you're technically picking your background before you roll stats, which I don't really like, because I would rather roll my stats and then know where to, my points need to go. Um, so it's kind of a risk, uh, because you don't have strength as an option here. You have dex and constitution instead, and we need to make sure our strength is good. So I could totally see taking soldier, or not soldier, sorry, guard instead, which also gives you uh, the alert feat, but I'm going to say criminal is my uh, number uh, five here. Also, it's interesting to have proficiencies in sleight of hand and stealth. Those are two abilities you wouldn't have, and you'd probably be pretty decent at them with your decent dexterity. All right, let's go on to species recommendations now. And we've got a lot of good choices for the Barbarian. I really like, um, you know, Dragonborn, because you've got a breath weapon, which is great for marshals, because now you can use it as part of your attack action as well as resistances although there are ways for barbarians to get resistances themselves dwarves give you more resistances dwarven toughness is really good extra hit points i don't really care about the spell the guys that give me spells so for example the elves uh the gnomes and the tieflings although gnome dark horse pick advantage on intelligence wisdom and charisma saving throws you're very bad at those mental stats and those can really trip you up. So having a gnome barbarian, first of all, is hilarious. <laughs> Still 30 feet of movement, by the way. 
<laughs> but also can be very useful with those uh, resistances, although you probably don't care about having the extra cantrips too much. Goliath is, of course, the very awesome pick. Halfling, annoyingly kind of good for everybody because of Lucky, um, but I don't think you need to take the uh, hide ability. Human's good for everybody. And uh, Orc is also pretty good for Barbarian, although it kind of gives you an extra reduced to zero hit points ability, and you've got a better version of that. But you don't get it until, uh, gosh, what is it? Level 11 that you get Relentless Rage, whereas the Orc ability comes online right when you become an Orc. So my top five are going to be Goliath at number one. I think that's pretty obvious here. Uh, it's, you know, you just think about this awesome giant mountain miss Goliath character as a barbarian, I would say so. Uh, mainly because, first of all, level 5, you can use a bonus action to get large, which is awesome for uh, raging. Although you actually don't need the advantage on strength checks, uh, most likely. Speed increased by 10 is good. Mainly, though, all these different lineages just give you extra effects that whenever you're making an attack roll... Uh, then you can do cool things to do extra damage. I would ar probably argue the bonus action teleporting 30 feet is very, very good unless you're taking that, uh, what is it, the Wild Heart where you can teleport around or something already. Um, but yeah, all these are amazing for the Barbarian. They're all either taking damage or dealing damage, which is definitely something that you're going to be doing as a Barbarian. Also, 35 feet, 5 feet of extra movement, pretty big for a melee character who is not a monk and gets a lot of extra movement. So uh, Goliath is my number one. Dwarf? Is my number two dwarf still only has or still has 30 feet of movement unlike previously i think had 25 feet um but all the different just buffs and stuff are, are fantastic resistance to poison damage advantage on saves to avoid or end the poisoned condition is absolutely amazing poison is very common um hit point max increases by one you're gonna have a lot of hit points as a barbarian so why not have some more and a bonus action gain tremor sense out to 60 feet that can really help you in situations where uh enemies leave your field of view and go invisible or some bullshit like that so I think Dwarf is great at number two. Dragonborn I'm going to put at number three because of that cool breath weapon attack that they really buffed up. And now you can use it as part of your attack action in order to do an AoE, which is something that is a big weakness for the Barbarian. You're almost always going to only be hitting one thing at a time. This allows you to actually uh, hit a bunch of people, which is always nice to have. Dark Vision resistance. Again, similar to the Dwarf, you gain a resistance elemental. Although keep in mind, if you take that you know, either of those subclasses that give you those resistances that you can't really get double resistance doesn't do anything. Level 5, you get temporary flights is also amazing, and we just saw there's other ways for barbarians to gain, like flight or other movement capabilities, which is cool. Number 4, I'm going to put as Orc. I know a lot of people are probably going to put Orc as number 1, but I'm going to put it a little bit lower on my list. Orc is still good for barbarian, um, but I think... I think it's because I see a lot of other abilities that do the things that Orc does. Like, there was a... I guess it's actually the subclass that, got, that does the temporary hit points, uh, which don't stack with each other. So this is the dash action as a bonus action. Again, there were other things that give you, you know, bonus action, dash and disengage, for example. Or the other subclass that gave you uh, temporary hit points. Um, Dark Vision to a range of 120 feet is fantabulous, though. And then Relentless Endurance, it is good to have that at level 3. You'll just get a better version of that, basically, um, at level 11. So I think Orc is still very good. I just think there's other ones I would probably take um, before Orc. And keep in mind, with this list, always just take whatever you want, you know, role-playing-wise or whatever. Like, play your character. And I'm not a min-maxer at all. I'm an optimizer. I do like to look at the character, think about the character I want to make, and that's usually some kind of species, some kind of class, some kind of background, story, personality. But then I want to optimally build that character to where I'm going to have a good time and be able to maximize all the stuff that I can do. I probably should have said that at the very beginning of the video if you've made it this far, but that's how I'm looking at all of this. And then number five, I'm going to say as a human, which human, it's kind of easy to recommend for everybody. Um, you know, heroic inspiration whenever you rest and you get an extra origin feat. I think a lot of uh, the feats are really good for Barbarian, for example, taking um, Tough along with Savage Attacker, Tavern Brawler, any of those combinations, or Alert is very good. This allows you to not have to take a certain... If you take Human, you don't have to feel like you have to take a certain background just for those abilities because you get that extra feat uh, lined up in there, which is fantastic. Skilled, maybe not as good. I frankly want more proficiency in a skill. But again, it kind of feels like... It almost feels like taking another half background... Uh, is a human without all the other extra benefits. But I would say Gnome is like my dark horse. Like, uh, could be really fun. I, again, the idea of a Gnome Barbarian is very funny, but also that advantage to all your mental saves is very, very useful indeed. All right, now that you've made it this far, I believe it is time for us 
to make our own 2024 Barbarian. Let's do this. All right, so we're using the Roll20 character monster in order to build our character out uh, in Roll20. And there's going to be a lot of things you're going to be seeing here, which is because I have all the things in Roll20. Uh, but don't worry about that. You will probably have fewer options than me. So make sure we cl uh, click on 2024 Barbarian, which you'll be able to recognize by uh, the artwork. I'm going to click on Choose Barbarian, which gives us all of our rundown of abilities as we level up. And we can choose on what level we want to start at, which it recommends... If you are a veteran 5e player, you should go ahead and start at level 3, which is, I think, a good idea, because the first two levels are kind of BS for uh, experienced players, and that way you get your subclass right off the bat as well. So I think that is what we're going to be doing for this run. So let's click on level 3. You can see it's giving us our hit point total, and then we can also choose our Barbarian subclass. Um... I guess I could do that now. We could go back and do it after I do a little bit more of the work here. So why don't I do that first? So our species, I'm going to select dwarf because I like the idea of being our barbarian with just about as many hit points as I possibly can have. And dwarf gives me uh, that nice dwarven toughness. Hit point maximum increased by one. Also get poison resistance. All these things are good. What are my top five? Uh, species for barbarians. So I'm going to go with dwarf as my species. Gives me all my things. We're going to click on next. And then I get to select my background. This is a lot of good options. And I had a top five, which I'll also be obviously selecting a background from my top five. And I, and again, you're going to not see all these options because I've got way too many. Uh, thankfully, the ones I want are all labeled 2024. I'm going to select Farmer because I want hit points, right? And Farmer gives me extra hit points because I start with the... Uh, let's see, which one is it? Farmer Origin Feet, which should tell me on the next screen. Let's go to Choose Farmer. But I believe it gives me the Tough Feet, which should give me an extra uh, two hit points per level. Which is going to go very, very nicely. All right, this is a problem. This needs to actually show up as my proper origin feet. Roll 20, that's a slap on the wrist for you. There we go, now it shows feet. Okay, so there we go. My feet is tough, which we've got uh, hit point, maximum increase by an amount equal to twice your character level when you gain this feat. So we've got an increase of plus one for dwarf and plus two for tough on top of just having a lot of hit points in general. Now comes the fun point, so fun part. I'm gonna do this completely new so I can react to these points and you can watch kind of how my... Uh, thought process goes because we are going to do a roll uh, for all of our stats and we're going to accept whatever these this roll is by the way my own house rules say that you can roll uh, all the dice and then if you get less than the average of the standard array you can just choose to take the standard arrays so that way my nobody feels like especially gimped from uh, their rolls so we're going to click roll all okay this is real bad. <laughs> 14, 10, 10, 14, 10, 11. Nothing horrible in there, but absolutely nothing that stands out uh, as a great stat. So that's not great. Thankfully, thankfully, Farmer does include strength, so we can get our 16 strength. So we're going to have to choose uh, a 14 for strength. And we're definitely going to have to choose one of our ability scores to increase by 2 is going to have to be strength as well. Uh, that leaves us, oh my gosh, either, well, we want to go hit points, so we're going to have to go con, Ooh, let's see, does former give me, ooh, interesting, so I actually can't increase my dex uh, by one, so I can only increase my con by one, so it might be, uh, it might actually be better given my stats here to actually increase, to put my con at 11, that way I can give it a plus one and do it at 12, 12 con feels so bad as a barbarian, and then do 14 decks. On the other hand, our hit point pluses will kind of make up for that. This is just really poor rolls. So if we go 11, 11 con, right? Because we can do, yeah, and then we go 14 decks and then just 10 of the mentals. So we don't really have a bad, we don't have a bad score. We also barely have a good one. Uh, not great, and I believe this probably is lower than the standard array, so you probably would rather take the standard array than... The, I think, actually, it may come out to be about the same. The standard array does include an 8 in there. 
So we definitely want strength to increase uh, by two. So the way they do it on here, I know my webcam blocks it a little bit. We choose strength twice, basically, and that increases this by two. And then the one we can increase is con, because farmer gives us strength, constitution, or wisdom to increase. So that one at least can get the plus one, because otherwise a plus one to the decks at 14 and 15 doesn't matter that much versus the plus one is going to help us a little bit on hit points. Yes, it feels very bad to have a plus one con. Also means my unarmored defense is only a plus three, so that's only a 13 on unarmored defense. So I'm going to have to really invest in some medium armor, and uh, honestly, this this feels bad. <laughs> as, as somebody who likes to optimize, this, this feels bad. We're going to make it work. We're going to make it work. All right, so we click on uh, next, and then we get to choose our skills. So our farmer proficiencies gives us animal handling and nature, so we don't want to choose those skills. Um, our Barbarian is going to give us, it uh, looks like three skills. I think we must get another one when we level up to three. Is that correct? Because I think you only get two when you actually start. Uh, yes, you get uh, level three primal knowledge. You gain proficiency in another skill. So that's why we get three skills to start off with. So athletics is pretty good. Uh, perception or survival could make sense, especially for our farmer. Um, in fact, I think I'm going to take both of those perception and survival. Let's just do that. Athletics, perception, survival, animal handling, and nature. That's five of them right there. And actually our, you know, wisdom and stuff isn't bad. That's gonna be a plus two to nature, animal handling, and perception plus six to athletics. Uh, yeah, that's pretty good. Don't know. This is, I think an error. It should not be a plus five on perception, only a plus two on those. I'm not sure why that's increasing so much. Uh, but these ones are correct. All right, so now if we go to review, it's going to say, hey, wait a minute, you didn't choose a subclass, which is correct. Yeah, unfinished steps. So uh, I'm picturing for our farmer barbarian, uh, this is someone who um, was a successful farmer, wanted to do the farm, tried to make the farm life happen, but I could either go comedic with it or serious with it. I kind of want to go comedic. So like, um, I, I don't know who the villain is and like the with the rabbits they come into the farm or whatever and it's the bad guys the farmer but like maybe just vermin came in and just kept fucking up his crops all the time until he finally flew into a rage and uh after he came out just all of his crops were destroyed and from that moment on he just picked up his you know scythe or backhoe or something some kind of farming equipment tool and has vowed to uh go on a, a terrible vengeful streak against all you know uh Various animals that farmers have to deal with, I guess. So, like, gophers and rabbits and, and all that. Which is kind of messed up if you think about it. A, a hero who specifically wants to murder small animals, but um, clearly sees them as a, a huge problem. So, for that end, uh, I think the farmer background works out well. I think we can reflavor a lot of the weapons as, you know, farming tools. And then when it comes to um, using a uh, background, or not a background, a, a, a subclass... So you want to click on subclass. I actually think a uh, world tree is going to, you, you mean you could go, uh, you could do path of the, uh, I keep the name of wild heart uh, for the animals, but I think he kind of maybe hates animals in a way. So I think world tree actually works better and I'm going to flavor the world tree and he may, you know, he's got a green thumb, right? So he's got the, the uh, ability to like grow uh, trees and stuff, but also his vitality of the tree ability, which he gets at level three. Let's see, there's world tree. Um, will where he uh, hands out temporary hit points is gonna be him throwing vegetables at people. So tossing vegetables and uh, you know giving those away is how he's gonna give everybody uh, the temporary hit points uh, whenever he rages. So I think that's gonna be absolutely fantastic. So I'm loving this idea for this character. Uh, very simple, goofy character. The stats did not help me very much at all, which is a bummer. I don't know why it's still giving me the yellow. Uh, what did I do wrong here? Let's see. Everything looks fine. Oh, Barbarian Weapon Mastery. That's what we forgot. We forgot Weapon Mastery. Uh, so thank you, Character Monster. You did remind me about that. So I, I think, you know, we can reflavor this. Uh, yeah, like a... like Again, I'm picturing like a scythe, you know, like a thresher for harvesting wheat, I guess. Um a backhoe, a trowel, all these things could be, uh, you'd, you'd have to reflavor and just talk to your DM about which to use. Um, I think great axe is what you start with, but you could use money to pick up anything else. So maybe spear, scimitar, quarter staff, pike might be too big. Glaive might actually work pretty well for 
a scythe because I don't think we actually have a scythe in there. So, but anyway, we just pick, you know, two of these to go with, and uh, that can be our weapon masteries for now. And we'll get more masteries uh, as we go. Uh, let's say, I don't know, uh, dagger for a, a trowel. <laughs> just all these different farming tools. All right, so let's see what that does for our final character review. Name, I don't know. Um, farmer, dwarven farmer named uh, Branson. Branson, Missouri. <laughs> there we go. Uh, it's got the overalls, got everything going on. See, I love this character already. And we can click uh, save and exit, and that should give us our final. Okay, why are our ability scores not showing up? Hopefully, they show up correctly here. Uh, yes, they do. Okay, so we've got our plus one con. So our final hit points, by the way, at level three is still 38, despite only having a uh, a plus one in constitution, which, yes, breaks my heart uh, as well. But uh, we'll be able to, you know, include all these weapon masteries and give them all the equipment that we need. Um, and away we go with our barbarian raging, uh, you know, extending our rage Using our Tremor sensibility as a bonus action is pretty good. Barbarian doesn't have a lot of bonus action things you can do. So I'm uh, I'm feeling this character. Hopefully next time I would ever play this character, I would roll better stats. Or I would probably take the standard array. But you can see how I, can, how I had to make choices given my background. Even using just all the stuff from the book. Now, you know, a good DM will probably let you uh, mix and match your backgrounds and feats. In fact, I think the information will be coming in the Dungeon Master's Guide. But this is an example of how you can just use this stuff from the book and still come up with a very fun, cool character. In this case, the Barbarian character. So I think that is going to wrap it up for our Barbarian video breakdown. So thank you so much for watching uh, this breakdown video. You can look for more D&D 2024 content here on the channel, as well as all our usual live streams and reviews. And as always, you can support my work at patreon.com slash Rogue Watson. Shouts to Planet Patrons, Joe, Will, Thomas, Stan, Brennan, Zinnocenter, Eclectic, Roleplay, Rokas for Corey, Big Nut, John F., John L., Nathan, Cap, Chris, Lake, Counselor, Andrew, The Reldron, Stephanie, Patrick, Jason, Ismail, Amit, Lumpy, Spud, Sharni, Warden, Harold, Udemoni, LLC, Jamie, Reese, Tom, AJ, The Eating the Dogs, and Louise and Gold Patrons, RPG, Paper, Graphics, Boy, and Yuma, Delizzle, Lounge, Jerome, Nathan, Fezzik, Adora, Scott, Refus, Karen, Jerry, Glenn, Marcus, and Mark. Thank you all very much for your support.